Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Wisconsin MMA Today. I'm Scott Jaffe and I'm joined by co-host Wisconsin Combat Sports, Paul Flatton. Begin. Be be begin. Scott Jaffe here along with my partner from Wisconsin Combat Sports, Paul Flatton. You're watching Wisconsin MMA today. This next featherweight matchup was featured on NAFC Armageddon, fighting out of the blue corner, representing Highland Fight Systems out of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. It's Jojo Garcia taking on Rufus Sports, Ray Sanchez, fighting out of the red corner, Ray from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Scott, this is a fight that fans do not want to blink. One of the fastest finishes on the entire night of NAFC Armageddon. You're going to watch right away here. Ray out of Rufus Sport just comes out firing on all cylinders. Good left hand by Jojo to start, but then Ray really puts, you know, gets his stuff in there and really lands a good solid right, putting Jojo against the fence. You know, when they get up here, then he just unleashes and gets another huge right that drops, and that's all it is. Huge win as the ref is going to stop in here, step in for Ray Sanchez. Lucas Sports, Ray Sanchez picking up the featherweight victory on NAFC Armageddon. You're watching Wisconsin MMA Today. Scott Jaffe here along with Paul Flatton, your winner, Ray Sanchez. Wisconsin MMA Today reporter Paul Flatton here with Ray Sanchez. Ray, you look great in the cage, man. Is that how you envision that going? Man, I really wanted to end it with a head kick, but you know, I'll take the knockout, bro. The old Rufus Sport head kick? Man, I, that's what I was going for, but you know what I'm saying? He didn't give me, I guess he didn't last long enough to go for it, so, you know, I took what I could, I could take. You came out, I got. You came out swinging, you know, you guys just went toe to toe. You yeah. know, is that your type of style or what type of fighter are you? Oh, that's my style, bro. Yeah? Head up, head up. Yeah, anyone you want to head up, bro. Anyone you want to thank? Man, just just everybody that's behind me and anybody that doubts us, you know what I'm saying? Because we don't get paid for this. We do it because we love it. You know what I'm saying? We're, there's no reward. The reward is tonight, and that's it. So this is for, for, all, for everybody that ain't got nowhere to look to, you know what I'm saying? It's everybody that's on the block right now trying to make it out the hood, you know? I used to be a fat boy. Now look at me, you know what I'm saying? I'm at 145 for 215. Holla at me. What's next in the cage for Ray Sanchez? Man. I mean, I want whoever, whenever. I'm, I'm ready now. I'll go again. That's all I can pretty much say. Not trying to be cocky, you know, I'm not that type of dude. I'm humble. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying, I'm ready. I've been ready a long time. You're watching Wisconsin MMA Today. Scott Chaffee here along with Paul Flatton. This here is a 135-pound bantamweight burn burner featured on NAFC Armageddon. Fighting out of the blue corner from Unified Martial Arts in Fond du Lac, it's Alex Brockway. And fighting out of the red corner from Rufus Sport, Mixed Martial Arts in Milwaukee, it's Mike Holter. Here's my partner, Wisconsin Combat Sports, Paul Flatton. Scott, as fans already have seen here in just the first few seconds of action, this is one that just went all, all nine minutes and just, you know, back and forth. Both guys come out swinging. Both guys really kind of come out just trying to show their best striking techniques, and it's evident why this fight was eventually labeled the fight of the night at the NFC Armageddon. Again, you're watching a 135-pound bantamweight matchup between Alex Brockway fighting out of the blue corner. You can see the blue around his wrists and with the red around his wrists, Mike Holter representing Milwaukee's Rufus Sport MMA Academy. You know, something that happens early on in this fight is, is uh, Holter just pushes the action. He just comes in there and looks for strikes. But Brockway does a great job early on counter-punching and really trying to land when he has his opportunity as well. Both guys just did a wonderful job looking to enact their will on, you know, on the feet. Large crowd on hand. This was NAFC Armageddon. 
You're watching Wisconsin MMA Today. Scott Joffe here along with Wisconsin Combat Sports, Paul Flatton. This is one of the very few times even that the action, you know, the, when they're pressing up here looking to get a takedown or trying to better their cage position. But right away, again, it just goes right to the strikes, and this is one that excited people throughout the night. I'm glad I was a spectator on this one versus a judge. Absolutely. As you'll see later, it's a, it's a tough decision that people are, you know, have been back and forth on wondering who won. But, you know, it's just a wonderful action and fight that you, want, you don't want to miss here, especially if you're a fan of the amateur division and, these, and the, per, the kids that are really trying to get better and better. And this just shows what they have already before they turn professional. Well said, a true testament to how good these amateurs are coming out of the fight camps now here in Wisconsin. What I love about this fight is every time it seems like, you know, they're going to measure up, they just they go for it. Both of them look, you know, they look for huge shots. Even though, the, you know, they are putting pinpoint accuracy with some of them, they're smart shots that they take while also being very exciting throughout the fight. Again, you're watching an NAFC Armageddon 135-pound Bantamweight matchup. Alex Brockway fighting out of the blue corner. He got the blue around his wrist, representing uni Unified Martial Arts in Fond du Lac. And fighting out of the red corner, Rufus Sports, Mike Holter out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. For my money, the first round kind of sees Brockaway landing the better strikes. I think he was a little more accurate. And, you know, especially with his overhand right, he's gonna, he connects with Holter a few times. Where Holter does, you know, it's definitely a close round. But I just like how the way Brockaway picks his points and, you know, his strikes kind of do more damage early on in this fight. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months, and now we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to home. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. Rufus and Pettis Showtime Sports Bar, where you watch the fights with the fighters. I'm lightweight world champion Anthony Showtime Pettis, along with MMA trainer Duke Rufus. And come fight time, we want to see you at Showtime. Highway 100, one block north of Silver Spring. Rufus and Pettis Showtime Sports Bar, where you watch all MMA action on two 15-foot mega screens. I'm MMA coach Duke Rufus, along with lightweight world champion Anthony Showtime Pettis. Come fight time, we want to see you at Showtime. High 100, one block north of Silver Spring. one of those times where, you know, the fight you know, right at the end of the round, great first round and one that people are going to be excited to see happens for the rest of it. Who do you think won that one? That one I give to Brockway. It was very close, you know, as you see all these rounds can be. Brockway just kind of, to me, landed the strikes that were just a little more on the money and, you know, he kind of, even though he was doing the counter punching, sometimes counter punching are able to land even more shots as you're able to pick your points and really find your target. Mike Biddle you see there, the, uh, the Unified Martial Arts Instructor, he had a handful of guys on this card, they all trained together and all said that they were a big part of each other's success on the card. And also you see Scott, uh, Scott Cushman here training Holter and then also Omar Chirari training as well. Again, you want to follow us on YouTube at WIMMA Today TV. Also follow us on Twitter and Facebook at WIMMA Today. Here we go, second round action. Fighting out of the blue corner is Unified Martial Arts Alex Brockway out of Fond du Lac and Milwaukee's Rufus Sport MMA Academy's Mike Holter fighting out of the red corner. Here we go, second round action. You're watching Wisconsin MMA Today. I'm Scott Jaffe along with Wisconsin Combat Sports Paul Flatton. And just like the first round, both guys come out and they're not afraid to stand and bang. 
They both, you know, have showed a lot of, you know, they're very aggressive fighters, and it makes for just a great fight as Broccoli lands a nice swinging left hand there. But Holter, though, he keeps the pressure up as he does. He ate, ate a flying knee to the midsection for it, though. Keeps moving forward. Yeah, and you'll see that's something that really I really respected watching this fight. He's a kid that just looks like he's going to keep pushing and keep, you know, keep going towards it. And he's able to brush off a lot of big shots and then start landing some of his own here, especially later in the second round. I was going to say, both fighters up to this point seem to be brushing off a lot of shots and, and pressing forward, pressing the action. Yeah, testament to their toughness and testament to what they've learned in training camps and just, you know, them as fighters. Unified martial arts, Mike Biddle, exciting fighters coming out of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Rufus Sport MMA Academy in Milwaukee. That in-your-face fighting style, evident here. Mike Holter in the red corner. Again, Alex Brockway in the blue corner. You're watching Wisconsin MMA today. Again, Scott Jaffe along with Wisconsin Combat Sports, Paul Flatton. Second round action, a bantamweight, 135-pound matchup. This was featured on NAFC Armageddon. You know, before the tie-up there, you saw two good shots by Brockway. But as he's done the whole time, Holter just brushed it aside and, you know, was able to land two shots of his own. You know, making this why eventually is just so tough to score. Good knees there, too. You know, when you tie up, you're kind of looking for that position. But Holter, throughout it, was able to find knees to the midsection. And those score points for the judges. And we're watching second round bantamweight action here. Yeah, NAFC Armageddon, Alex Brockway, blue corner, Mike Holter, the red corner. And see who, who by the paper on their wrists. Yeah, this to me the second round was even more exciting than the first. Both guys, you know, didn't slow down one bit and came out and just threw out, you know, pretty much if the same amount of punches. There was a little more head kicks, and the punches really start to land here at the end, especially that left hand by Holter. Neither fighter seems to want to give an inch. No, these, you know, these smaller weight classes, there's a reason they're so popular now in the major promotions like the Uf UFC and such. People love watching the energy these guys bring to the cage each and every time. And, and when you're starting to see it already at, you know, at the basis of the grassroots level of MMA, you know they're just going to keep getting better and better as these weight classes develop. Excellent amateur, 135-pound bantamweight matchup. Again, Mike Holter, the blue corner, Alex Brockway, the, excuse me. Alex Brockway fighting out of the blue corner, Michael Holter fighting out of the red corner. Brockway's on your left, Holter's on your right. Both fighters in black shorts because Brockway's got the black and white on. Yeah, and you know, Holter really is pushing you know, at the end of this round, which is exciting. He's able to stuff this takedown at the beginning and start landing some shots, you know, in the midsection a little bit, nothing big, but just enough as that round ends to definitely, you know, make the judges think what happened with that one. A lot of action here in the second round as we'll take a look back. Some higher highlights. Again, you're watching Wisconsin MMA Today. Scott Joffe here along with Wisconsin Combat Sports' Paul Flatton. That was a very close round, and I think, you know, for the judges, that's the one that kind of gave some trouble. It depends on where you were seated of those three judges, where they were seated across the cage, because it really was, you know, different shots land, and you see different things from your angles. And later on, as we'll see, that, you know, some decision kind of was split, and it was really largely based on that second, close second round. Yeah, very hard to call. Both fighters, again, pressing the action. This was a 135-pound bantamweight matchup on NAFC Armageddon. Getting ready to start third round here. Again, fighting out of the blue corner, representing Unified Martial Arts in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Did I see the wave or something like that? It looked like it. People uh, are getting excited for this uh, one. A ripple. <laughs> Alex Brockway again fighting out of the blue corner and out of the red corner representing Milwaukee's Rufus Sport is Mike Holter. Third round action beginning right now. Wisconsin MMA Today. You know, basically on the judges scorecards, this one could have been 1-1. One, one. You know, that's how I saw it so far. So you come into this one and really got to see how it's going to play out. Brockway goes for an early takedown, but as we've seen throughout the whole fight, Holter's just not going to let that happen. And is able, you know, to get a look, almost get the trip. Now he goes for more cage control, which is something he's been doing, you know, is a lot throughout this fight. Again, NAFC Armageddon was produced in partnership with the Wisconsin National Guard and powered by Concede, with additional support from Showtime Sports Bar and Tiffin Mats. Again, follow us on YouTube at WIMMA Today TV. And there's where Holter is able to get, you know, his first real, the first real takedown and really get himself in the first dominant position of this fight. The first time it goes off the feet, you know, largely and lets Holter just start, you know, to impose his will and really kind of definitely take over in this third round. And, you know, the, the ref's there. This is one that looked like maybe it was going to be stoppage, or stoppage, but Brockway does a good job surviving and not allowing the fight to finish.
Yeah, some people thought the ref was going to stop the fight or should have stopped the fight at this point. It does go on. 135 pound bantamweight matchup. You know, I didn't see a point that it should have been stopped. You know, he gets here, especially especially when he went away from that. He goes he's a little too high in the back. But I think it was just a good job that Broccoli kept, you know, able to turn into some of the moves and able to there and you know right away he's able to keep it to a point where it's just I never saw a stoppage spot. Again, you're watching Wisconsin MMA today. Scott Joffe here, along with Wisconsin Combat Sports Paul Flatton. Mike Holter looks like he's controlling some third round bantamweight action here, NAFC Armageddon. Yeah, controls are definitely how I describe this third round. You saw some blood, you know, blood open up there from Brock Waite. And Holter is just, you know, definitely, definitely in control this round. And what a lot of people thought was maybe control the fight after a close second as he, you know, looks for a choke here that possibly could have ended it but just doesn't get the right spot, doesn't clinch his arms to get this choke. Reversal, his arm's in trouble, but nothing big. And you know, even with the reversal for a second there, Brockway, you know, he able to sweep up, but he just couldn't do anything. And Holter, definitely with strong core position, and able to get himself right back in another dominant spot. So as this third round uh, nears a conclusion here, what you're going to see with this awesome, awesome fight. It's somewhat of a questionable outcome, yeah, to it, say the least. Yeah, no, I agree. It was, you know, it was tough sitting cage side. It was. it was very tough to think, but or to see it. But now going back, you know, I personally, I personally give Holter the second round and definitely the third. So no matter what, it was a very close call. You know, it's eventually going to go for Brockway here. As it does a great fight, Paul Alex Brockway comes away with a split decision victory. Wisconsin MMA Today reporter Paul Flatten here with Alex Brockway in the fight of the night up to this point. Man, how, what was it like going out there? Oh God, so exhilarating. It was a war. You hit him with everything you had or yeah, that. How I tough did. was that guy? He was tough. He took every shot I could give. It was amazing. You know, you guys went back and forth, back and forth. What rounds do you think you took in that split decision? I definitely think I took the first two. I felt like I hit him with more. Uh, last one, it was obviously his. No no doubt about it. You know, I saw you guys had three guys training for this. Looked like you guys were together all the time. How big was that in your training to, you know, push each other? Oh, God. Huge. We're a family. Unified Martial Arts is a great family. Uh, great training partners. It was awesome. Anyone you want to dedicate this fight to? Uh, it's my training partners, Unified Martial Arts. Awesome, man. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months. And now, we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to homes. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. Rufus and Pettis Showtime Sports Bar, where you watch the fights with the fighters. I'm lightweight world champion Anthony Showtime Pettis, along with MMA trainer Duke Rufus. And come fight time, we want to see you at Showtime. Highway 100, one block north of Silver Spring. Rufus and Pettis Showtime Sports Bar, where you watch all MMA action on two 15-foot mega screens. I'm MMA coach Duke Rufus, along with lightweight world champion Anthony Showtime Pettis. Come fight time, we want to see you at Showtime. High 100, one block north of Silver Spring. that moment, it hit me. 
This is why I joined the Guard. I couldn't believe it. I just saved a life. Somebody from my hometown. Be there for your community at NationalGuard.com. Welcome back to Wisconsin MMA Today. I'm Scott Joffe, and I'm joined by my co-host, Wisconsin Combat Sports, Paul Flatten. Today, we're visiting Neutral Ground North, located at 1307 Wisconsin Avenue in Grafton. We are Neutral Ground North, and you're watching Wisconsin MMA Today. I call judo a life sport. In judo, because of the throws, you're knocked down a lot. You're knocked down a lot. You're knocked down. You get back up. Knocked down. Get back up. And you learn how to do that. You learn how to come back and fight again, and fight harder, and and learn some strategy, work on a technique, that type of thing. Same thing happens in life. You get knocked down. You lose a job. You don't get. Uh, your interview doesn't go well. What do you do? You go home and cry. No, you don't go home and cry. You go home and review what you did. Where can I get better? How can I work on this? If you can do that in judo and learn that in judo, which is a, an extremely difficult sport, it's a tough sport. It's very physical and it's very humbling. If you can do it there, you can do it in life. So that's why I call it a life sport. When you win, you feel like you can now do anything. Uh, most of our students come through word of mouth. We do a little bit of online advertising, uh, but most of it's come in through solid recommendations from other parents and other kids in school. I win. It's like so exciting that I just beat all these girls. I definitely walk tall knowing that I'm number one. And it helps knowing that, uh, that you don't have to worry about people getting in your way because once they know you do judo or that, they're going to back down knowing, oh, sorry, kid, I didn't know. Judo is a much more public martial art, um, especially in the long term. I mean, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and fitness and whatnot, kickboxing, they all have the MMA, uh, UFC backing them a lot. Uh, judo's definitely got the Olympic backing, so every four years the judo's in the Olympics. So we actually see a rush. So this year we got a lot of judo influence from the Olympics being on TV. Uh, I think judo being an older martial art in Wisconsin, there's a lot more black belts available in Wisconsin for judo. Um, it's a little bit longer lasting and People know it better. It's, it's kind of one of those karate, taekwondo, judo, kind of in the back of people's minds, they know about it. Um, Jiu-jitsu is still being fresh to Wisconsin. I mean, in the last 10 years, it really hasn't been, a long, been around for too long. I mean, Wisconsin got its first black belt maybe 13 years ago. Um, Greg, our judo instructor, I think has been a black belt for at least 40, maybe more. Judo's an Olympic sport. Uh, I have a young niece and a nephew who, uh, have dreams of making an Olympic team. I have a son who has a, has a dream of, of one day perhaps making an Olympic team. So, so it's a sense of accomplishment. It's a, it's a sense of pride. Uh, that's what it's all about. Once I achieve all that stuff, it makes me feel good after uh, knowing that it's going to help me and make me better. I think it's really cool. Um, like, it's not like Every day after school, like a normal kid, you're not going to hang out with somebody. It's just like every day you get home, you do your homework, and then you go right to train. And then, or you, we, I, we can do it at home, or we can go here or down to Illinois. It's definitely a sport, but also it challenges your mind. And you learn from it and learn to live strong. That's what they want you to learn. Yeah, I think it creates a good work ethic on how to um, go with the project or something in school. Hard work through judo has taught me like doing school work that you have to do it and when you do it, it pays off. We're Neutral Ground North and you're watching Wisconsin MMA I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months, and now we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to homes. At that moment, 
I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. Rufus and Pettis Showtime Sports Bar, where you watch the fights with the fighters. I'm lightweight world champion Anthony Showtime Pettis, along with MMA trainer Duke Rufus. And come fight time, we want to see you at Showtime. Highway 100, one block north of Silver Spring. Rufus and Pettis Showtime Sports Bar, where you watch all MMA action on two 15-foot mega screens. I'm MMA coach Duke Rufus, along with lightweight world champion Anthony Showtime Pettis. Come fight time, we want to see you at Showtime. High 100, one block north of Silver Spring. Hey, this is Ben Askren. I'm native of Heartland, Wisconsin, 2008 Wrestling Olympian, current Bellator MMA welterweight champion. I'm here to show you some wrestling techniques. We're going to start today with the double leg. Uh, I got my friend, fellow MMA fighter Rick the Gladiator Glenn. He's an up and coming fighter. Uh, you're going to see a lot of him in the future. But today, I'm going to blast double leg him. All right, so the technique we're going to do today is the double leg. It's a fairly easy MMA technique, something even beginners can do. What I'm going to do that's different from the wrestling double leg is I'm not going to hit my knee on the ground. All I'm going to do is lower my level a little bit. I'm going to try to put my shoulder right on top of his abs, hands behind his knees, and drive through him. So lower my level, shoulder in the abs, drive through, just like that. One of the best ways to set this up uh, is with a simple jab, and then I wait till he punches back. When he punches back, I lower my level and I go. So I'll be saying, I'll jab at him, jab at him. When he goes to the back, I drop my level. So I got below that punch, shoulder to the ribs, and drive through. Okay, the one thing we do want to watch out for, obviously, at double leg is a guillotine choke hold. And so the, the how I do that is I keep my neck really strong and into his ribs. So what I'm going to do instead of Put my head past his ribs, I put my head into his ribs. So, if I turn Rick, what I do is when I'm shooting here, my shoulders and his abs, my head's up strong, so he can't really grab around my head very much. What a lot of people do is they drive his head all the way through, and now Rick can grab a hold and choke me out with the guillotine. So, as I'm doing the double leg, I got my head up strong, shoulder in, and now as I finish through, he can never try to grab around my head because I'm in there strong with him. And I finish. So that's the trick to staying out of the guillotine choke from the double leg. That was the blast double leg for MMA. I think it's one of the easiest things for a beginner to do with, as, uh, as a first takedown. Thank you for joining us for another exciting edition of Wisconsin MMA Today. I'm Scott Jaffe. And I'm Paul Fladden. And we'll see you again next week.